Greetings citizens of Ashbin. What a nice day to be a gamer. My name is Matt. Today I'm going to show you some really useful tips and tricks of survival in Don't Starve Together. In the previous video I mentioned how I was frustrated by the difficulty of the original game. Now I would like to show you a few tricks which will help you to avoid such frustration and which will make your survival easier. One of the materials you will need later in the game is silk. You will need it for a lot of things, especially for winter clothing. So, how can you get silk early in the game? First, you have to find a spider camp, because silk is dropped by spiders. One way to get the silk is to kill a spider, and if you're lucky it will drop a silk and it was worth the effort, but what if it only drops crappy monster meat instead, and you lost a lot of HP for nothing? No silk, low HP, not a good start I would say. So here is tip number one. Instead of killing the spiders, build a trap and place it right next to the web of the spider camp. The next step is to bait the spider. All you have to do is to step on the web for a moment and one or two little spiders will immediately start running towards you. Now don't panic. Just move back and stand right behind your trap so the spider have to pass it to reach you. When the spider passes the trap, the trap will capture it the same way the trap can capture rabbits for example. And the last step is to click on the trap and gather the captured spider. When you click on the trap, instead of a live spider you will get the drop of the spider. Still the chance that you would receive a silk would be only 25% but at least you avoided the fight and you kept your health points. When you lured out all the spiders out of their nests with this method, all you have to do is destroy their nest, which definitely drops silk for you. If you plan to attack a larger spiral camp, make sure to gather your friends and bring more traps and prepare for a huge battle, because when a spider passes a trap, there is a chance that the trap simply just will not catch the spider. Then the fight is unavoidable of course. If a spider nest is level 2 or level 3, you can recognize the level of the nest from the size of it, then green spiders will appear. You really have to be careful because they have a rather dangerous jump attack and they can withstand more damage than simple black spiders. Here, let me show you how to deal with them. So, right now in a moment I will hit the nest, then the green spiders will appear. Let me show you. Uh, there they are, okay let's run! And you will see the jump attack in a moment. And they jumped over the traps, so don't panic what you have to do. Just run around and try to lure them to the traps once again. Okay, come on Spideys. Almost there. Almost there, gotcha! So this is the way how you can capture green spiders as well. So here comes tip number two. There is another material which you will need to craft winter clothes. Beefalo wool. You don't have to kill a beefalo to acquire its wool of course. If you have a razor, what you can craft out of two flints and two twigs, then the only thing you have to do is to wait till nightfall. At night the beefaloes will fall asleep and you can safely shave them. It is that easy. If you manage to kill a beefalo, then with the help of its horn you can lure other beefaloes to your base for a shaving and of course for useful manure for the farms. Just simply use the horn and see what happens. You have all the necessary materials to craft a winter hat and survive a winter. Congratulations! Tip number 3. In early game it is really useful if you have a method to recharge your health points and restore your sanity. You can do this by planting flowers. First, you have to craft a bug net from 4 silks, 2 twigs and 1 rope. Then, with the help of your net you have to catch butterflies. Just simply click on the butterfly and your character will catch it. The next step is to grab the butterfly in your inventory and plant it to the ground and see what happens. You planted a flower. Yes. A flower. Out of a butterfly. I know, I know, it is crazy, it sounds crazy. Now you can go away and catch other butterflies of course, but it is easier to stay around the flower you have just planted, because it will generate more butterflies in time. 
Simply just catch those and plant new flowers. Congratulations, you have created an endless supply of butterflies. If you are low on HP, just kill a butterfly with your ox and spear and eat the wings of it. It will restore your health points and sanity. If you are lucky, you have some catcoons around your flowers and they will do the butterfly killing stuff instead of you. You only have to pick up the wings and enjoy. Tip number 4. So now you have flowers and butterflies to restore your health and sanity. Now it is safe for you to go and explore the graveyard nearby. If you have found the cemetery in the game, do not hesitate. Go and dig all the graves. You may find useful items in them. You will only need a shower and some luck that a spooky ghost will not pay a visit to you while you are digging those graves. And by useful items, I mean gears for instance, which are necessary to build an ice box, which is crucial structure if you want to survive the winter. During grave digging, your sanity will decrease. So after you have finished in the graveyard, go home and pick some of the flowers which you have previously planted. Picking flowers will restore you most of your sanity. Also, if you eat the flowers, it will restore your health. Do not forget about the butterflies. Tip number 5. Against wolves. Wolves are really annoying in early game and are a constant threat throughout the whole game. I recommend you not to fight them in the middle of your base because if one of them catches on fire because of your campfire then probably it will run around and ignite every freaking structure you have built so far. So here is my tip. This technique is commonly used and a good method to avoid wolf ambushes. It's called the panic room. To build a panic room you have to build stone walls at the alchemy engine out of cut stones. If you have enough stone walls in your inventory Try to build a small room out of it, and a corridor-like entrance. This corridor-like entrance will be the place where you will place the traps. These will not be simple traps which we used when we fought against the spiders, but tooth traps instead. To craft a tooth trap, you will need one log, one rope, and a tooth, which is dropped by wolves. Here I am building a really small panic room just to show you how it works. When you have crafted all the traps, place them into the corridor. When the next wave of wolves approaches, just run into the panic room and see what happens. Do not worry, your character cannot activate the traps. To illustrate it, I lured the beefalo into my panic room. There you go, the traps hit it several times, however, they could not kill it. But do not worry, it will kill the wolves. After each trap is activated, you can reset them. Each trap can be used several times, which is good news because that means that these traps are really a long-term investment. Tip number 6. When you are playing on staff together, in many cases death is unavoidable for your character. However, in Don't Staff Together, there is an alternative solution to touchstones. You can resurrect another player's character by giving him a telltale heart. To craft a telltale heart, you will need 3 grasses one spider gland and 40 health points. Yes, it will take some of your health points unfortunately. When you crafted a heart, just simply click on the heart and then click on the other player's ghost and see what happens. But be careful, if you resurrect your friend like this, it will take some of his maximum health points. So these were my tips for beginners in Don't Starve Together. I hope you find them to be useful. If you liked the video, please give a like and don't forget to subscribe. And leave your Don't Starve Together story in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Hail citizens of Eshbin. Until next time.